So thank you all so much for joining me today. I want to talk about something that I think is kind of serious, but also a little bit tongue in cheek, kind of funny. Like what if foods came with labels that actually said what they do to your health? So what if food labels came with a label that said, caution, eating this product could lower your immune system by 50% for the next four hours. Do you think people would think twice about eating it? Because that's what sugar does. If you eat sugar, believe it or not, sugar can reduce your immune system's ability to perform like it should. It almost makes your white blood cells kind of like drunk and they just kind of stagger around and they don't really do what they're supposed to do. So if you eat like, say, okay, for kids, for example, if you send your children to school and you give them a donut or a bowl of cereal that has sugar in it before they go to school, what you're doing is you're reducing their body's ability to fight off germs and bacteria for about four hours. So guess what? They go to school. They come in contact with a bunch of kids before school. They're touching everything because you know how kids are. They touch everything. They're always putting their hands on their mouth. They're doing all these things. Um, they're chewing on their fingers. They're playing with their hair. And they're getting in touch with all of these bacteria, right? Which usually should just make your immune system tougher. But if you're eating sugar before you go into public that way, guess what? You're reducing your immune system's ability to fight off bacteria and germs. And that's why all those little kids come home with snotty noses and such because they're sharing germs back and forth and they are not able to fight them off the way your body is meant to do so. So what if that box of cereal came with a label that said, caution, Eating this for breakfast could cause your immune system to be weak for four hours. Would you eat it? Would you feed it to your kids? What if um, a product like that had gluten in it came with a label that said, warning, consuming this product could cause leaky gut syndrome. Do you think people might think twice before they bought that great big loaf of bread? I would, for sure. I mean, I do already. I know these things, so I pay a lot of attention. But because gut health is important to me and because feeling really good is important to me, I try to, um, first of all, pay attention to those things in my life. But I love to share those things with you guys as well. So, I mean, I was just curious. If, if you saw labels like that on your food, would it make you, would it help you make better choices? Or do you just like rather just keep it in your head? I really appreciate you guys watching. If you're watching this as a replay, please type hashtag, hashtag replay below. Because I'd like to know if you're watching on the replay. I always love to uh, thank you for watching. So if you are doing so, please let me know. If you're live, you don't have to comment live. But say something. Say hello. Say um, I, I hate your show. I love your show. I um, want to know where you get those ketones because that's always a good topic to talk about with me. But um, these things damage your body, right? So sugar, we just talked about that. Antibiotics. Most of us know that using antibiotics frivolously is bad for your system. Antibiotics tear up the gut, but sometimes they're necessary. So you want to make sure that the only time you're using them is when they are absolutely necessary. Don't use antibiotics for the common cold. It doesn't cure viruses. Um, processed foods. If you have foods that you're purchasing that have words in them that you cannot pronounce, don't eat it. I'm telling you what, when my patients at my office used to come to me and talk to me about what was healthy to eat, I would always tell them, you're going to have a lot less garbage when I get done with you because you won't have all those takeout boxes and packages that food comes in, but your trash will stink. So you'll have to take it out more because it's going to be full of live ingredients that rot and die because you're eating fresh vegetables and fresh foods. So eat less processed foods. Don't eat low fat. Don't eat low fat. If it says low fat, don't eat it. Guess what? If it says low fat, they've replaced the flavor of low fat with something else to make it taste good. And it's a chemical. So don't eat low fat. Don't do it. Don't do it. 
And you're eating a low veggie diet. If you're eating a low vegetable diet, you are wrong. If you're on keto and you're eating a low vegetable diet, you are doing it wrong. You must have vegetables. Vegetables have amazing things in them. Prebiotics, which feed a healthy gut. Super important. Probiotics come from fermented foods, things like that. And you want to make sure that you're getting the fiber and the nutrients, the minerals, the vitamins, all of the things that come from a growing plant. And you want them as fresh as possible. You don't want something that's been sitting on a shelf for three months before it gets to you. Picked like picked before it was ripe and then brought to market. That is not healthy. It won't have enzymes in it. It won't have the things in it that it needs. So if you have a farmer's market in your area, please take advantage of locally grown foods because they're going to be so much better for you. You're going to get so much more out of them. But please do, actually do not do these things. Don't eat sugar. Don't use antibiotics. Don't eat processed foods. Don't eat a low fat diet and don't eat a low veggie diet. Those are all the don'ts that I have for you today because all of the, those things are super important for you. And if you follow that advice, if you eat foods that you have that have things in them that you can pronounce, you're going to feel a whole lot better. Totally will feel a whole lot better. And I mean, eat foods that don't need warning labels, right? Like vegetables, like broccoli doesn't have a warning label on it. Um, now, sometimes foods are better for you if you steam them. Like broccoli is actually better for you if you steam it just slightly. The same with tomatoes. Tomatoes are actually better for you cooked than they are raw. But they're still good for you raw. Um, somebody just pulled up next door. I heard a car honk. Um, but avoid things like preservatives and color additives and things that say... Even if it says natural flavor, if it doesn't tell you what the natural flavor is, doesn't it make you wonder? Like, why don't they just say what it is? Um, stabilizers, like um, foods you cannot pronounce. But use things like foods that have ascorbic acid and sodium nitrate and things like that are a little bit more natural. But I'm, I'm really dip, I am really, really begging you to eat foods that are fresh and healthy for you. Um, so foods that are better for you, let's see. Did you know that chicory root has inulin in it, which is an amazing prebiotic? And a lot of foods are now starting to use chicory root as the um, fiber in the foods that they make. So that's something to look into. Ground chicory root is a very awesome thing to add to your diet. Um, it helps your body, helps your body's beneficial bacteria. Also things that other than chicory root, Jerusalem artichokes, asparagus, leeks and onions, dandelion root and garlic. And I know a lot of people are thinking dandelion root, what the heck? But they're actually good for you, believe it or not. Um, bananas and plantains, especially when they're green, when they're more green, not, not totally green. Um, and bananas have less sugar in them when they're more green, so they're better for you instead of waiting until they get super sweet, which is the way I like them. Um, broccoli and cruciferous vegetables, kale, cabbage, cauliflower, all of those are great. And they have sulfur in them, which is great for your body. And they help um, reduce inflammation, believe it or not. Things, fruits that have dark pigment, like raspberries and blueberries, and all of the berries have amazing phytochemicals in them, can help your body. They're also higher in fiber. Now, if you're doing a ketogenic lifestyle, you have to monitor how much of those you have. Um, let's see other things like fermented foods, yogurt, kefir, um, tempeh, miso, kimchi, sauerkraut, and even sprouted grains, depending on what diet you're on. So you want to make sure that you're eating foods that have nutrients in them, nutrients and eat foods that don't need a warning label, right? So if you're thinking that maybe the foods that you're eating should have a warning label, like Caution, this food might cause leaky gut syndrome. Um, make sure you know what the ramifications are of what you're eating before you do it. Think about it. And if you're a, an emotional eater and you don't pay attention to what you're eating before you eat it because you're emotionally eating, you need to talk to someone about that. Because if you can't control what you put in your mouth, 
then you're having an emotional eating issue that needs to be dealt with. And you're never going to be able to eat a healthy lifestyle and live the life that you deserve. Live the life you deserve if you have an emotional eating problem. Because you're being triggered by stress or something else or fear that is causing you to do those things and you are hurting yourself long term. So if you have an emotional eating problem, please find somebody that knows how to deal with that and talk to them about it and make sure that you are dealing with those particular issues. Irene says, I love our veggies. And she also heard that asparagus removes toxins from your body. That is correct. And asparagus is great for your kidneys, believe it or not. Have you ever noticed that when you eat asparagus, it makes your urine smell kind of funky? Asparagus is really good for your kidneys. Just keep that in mind. So I really appreciate you guys watching today. I'm super fired up and I've been working on some things that I'm super excited about and I'm not quite ready to let the cat out of the bag yet, but I did buy this handy dandy journal. It's actually a travel journal, but I'm using it as my daily journal because I am going to start doing some amazing self-development stuff for you guys. And if you want in on that, you got to let me know. You have to buy your own journal. I'm not selling journals. You have to get your own. I picked this one because it speaks to me because I love to travel. It's like part of my soul. And if you want to get in on that, you just got to get your own journal and um, send me a message because I'm going to start a little group of people that want to do some self-development work and I need to like sit down and like I need to brain dump. I need to figure out what it's going to look like but I've been doing a lot of cool things lately and I really want to help others feel better about the situation that they're in, feel better about their life and learn to live their own life on their own terms and be happy. So I'm super excited about that. But thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Poop Talk. If you have questions or comments, please drop them below. Let me know where you're watching from. If you agree or disagree, that's okay. We can talk about that too, but I love you guys. And just in case nobody has told you today, you are special, you are loved, and you got this. You can do this. I believe in you.